Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Thank you for joining me for this continuing discussion on 30 reasons for being Muslim. The reason I want to explore today is that we have the Quran as our maker's guide for us on how to operate, how to live a life that is holistic, balanced, and successful. We know that everything comes with an owner's manual, uh, something prepared by the manufacturer to tell us on how to use this thing. Uh, in, in the best way possible for maximum uh, and ideal results. What about the human being? Does the, the human being come with, a, with an owner's manual? We as Muslims believe uh, that we do, and uh, we believe that manual is uh, the glorious Quran, and that just it makes us all enthusiastic about being Muslim. Now, the problem out there is that people are looking for some such type of manual. People, you know, don't know what to follow, and... Uh, you know, sometimes we listen to scientists and uh, they're good, but sometimes they tell us uh, the results of one study one day, eat this, and then the next uh, day they come out with the results of a different study that says, no, don't eat that. And, and so we, we don't know. Is this good for us or bad for us? And, uh, you know, if we extrapolate from that uh, to wider and bigger stuff, we realize that uh, we, sometimes we're at a loss. What exactly are we supposed to do? What's good, what's bad, what's not, and so on. Now, naturally, people look towards uh, the religious scriptures as possible owner's guides. These are books from God. They must teach us how to live. Uh, and that comes from God's perspective, God's intelligence, God's wisdom. So that must be what is right for us. But when we look around at the world scriptures, uh, we see that uh, um, the scriptures are generally written a long time ago, including the Quran, to be honest. But uh, at the same time, uh, we find that many of these books, they contain ideas which are so different from our current ideas that it's hard for the modern person uh, to really rally to the call of these uh, books and to take them uh, seriously in all of their aspects. Take, for example, women's rights. Uh, we have fought long and hard for women's rights. And so when we go to read one of these uh, ancient books and we find that women's rights are not so properly represented in these books, uh, we find ourselves feeling disconcerted. Uh, we're not happy with following the books anymore. Uh, we don't see how this can be a guide for us. And it's not only in women's rights. It's in so many areas. Uh, what about the problem of racism? And uh, how do we treat various segments of uh, society? How do we live within a marriage? How do we live with the broader society? How, how do countries relate to each other in terms of international law? In many of these respects, we find that the uh, previous scriptures are uh, somewhat deficient uh, and they do not speak to the needs and aspirations and uh, mindset of the modern person. So people are still out there looking for an owner's guide. It's something prepared by our master and our creator, our fashioner, to tell us how to live for be best and maximum uh, results. So uh, does Islam offer a solution to this? And I would say yes. The Quran is uh, for Muslims, uh, definitely the word of God. This is our owner's uh, manual on how to live. But it is also a very practical document teaching us uh, things that uh, we have arrived at through our long, hot, hard-fought uh, struggles outside of the Quranic context. And, uh, and yet the Quran spoke about these uh, issues uh, some 1400 years ago. Take, for example, women's rights. Uh, the Quran speaks so much about women's rights that uh, there is a chapter of the Quran and uh, known as uh, Surah An-Nisa, the chapter about the women. That's the fourth chapter of the Quran because it deals so much with women's uh, rights. And then there's another chapter, so the 65th chapter of the Quran, that's called the chapter of divorce. It is also called in our classical commentaries on the Quran, uh, the, the, the lesser, the smaller uh, chapter of, of women, because there too, a lot, of, uh, a lot is said regarding women's rights. And so putting all of this together, looking at the Quran as a whole, it, we see that even outside of those two surahs, in Surah Al-Baqarah, for example, there's so much emphasis on women's uh, rights. So we see that uh, a modern concept and a modern uh, preoccupation uh, is already something that is addressed in the Quran. The Quran is teaching us to uh, fulfill our rights and also our responsibilities, uh, uh, you know, uh, fulfill the rights of everyone and fulfill our responsibilities to everyone. So too, the Quran, if we are to broad, uh, broaden our scope here, um, we, we will see that the Quran speaks against racism. For example, in the 49th chapter of the Quran, in the 13th verse, the Quran is very clear. 
uh, that the most honorable among you are those who are most conscious of their duty to God, regardless of uh, nations or tribes that you happen to come from. And so uh, passages like this, uh, you know, help us to eliminate uh, racism. In the 30th chapter of the Quran, uh, we have uh, the statement that, uh, you know, God uh, uh, created us in all of these different colors and so on. Uh, and this is all part of his, the signs of his majesty. That's how God wants it. Uh, you know, God has created a colorful garden rather than a garden with just simply one uh, set of flowers uh, all looking the same, uh, all of the same color. So uh, there is wisdom in the creation of God, and that wisdom is reflected in the Quran. The Quran teaches us to live uh, a life uh, which uh, is true to ourselves. It teaches us how to be good holistic persons, to eat right, to diet. Quran tells us to keep ourselves clean. God loves those who keep themselves clean. The Quran tells us to eat uh, properly, eat the good things. And how it is people speak about wholesome foods. Uh, so uh, the Quran teaches us how to live within a family, how to live within society, how nations can be at peace with each other when the Quran says, So what does this do for us in our modern world? Well, the Quran, first of all, empowers us to be holistic persons. Uh, to be good, ideal citizens wherever we are, to be good to everyone and all and sundry around us, to be good to our uh, environment, to be good to nature, and to be good to people and animals. And uh, by empowering us thus, the Quran is uh, giving us that owner's guide on how we are to live properly. So uh, this is uh, one of my good reasons for being a Muslim, uh, that the, the reason being that we have in the Quran God's guide for us, our owner's manual on how to live and function for the best and ideal results in this life and the life hereafter. Thank you for joining me for this continuing discussion on 30 reasons for being a Muslim. Join me again tomorrow for another such reason, God willing. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The most effective and far-reaching da'wah we can do these days is on social media. That's why we're developing the Muslim Media Hub. We're harnessing the power of media to spread the message of Islam. Please support this project at QuranSpeaks.com and share in the reward from God.